Can a star fuse elements heavier than iron? In this video, I'm going to tell you one, that they can, and precisely which elements those are. Two, we're going to explore the nuclear binding energy curve to get a better understanding of the underlying logic of fusion, and then we're going to take that knowledge and use it to understand how certain stars find it possible to fuse elements heavier than iron. Let's get right into it. First, there are definitely elements heavier than iron that are fused in stars. How far does fusion really go? Well, the iron that's fused in a star is iron 52, or iron with 52 nucleons. And because iron has 26 protons, that means that this isotope of iron has 26 neutrons. A helium nucleus will fuse with iron 52 to give you nickel 56, and then a helium nucleus will also fuse with that nickel 56 to give you zinc 60. However, Neither iron-52, nickel-56, or zinc-60 are stable. Each of them decay two atoms down in the periodic table. The iron decays first to manganese and then to chromium, leaving behind a stable chromium-52 atom. The nickel decays first to cobalt and then to iron, leaving behind the stable iron-56 atom. And finally, the zinc decays first to copper and then to nickel, leaving behind the stable nickel-60 atom. To understand how this is possible, let's turn to the nuclear binding energy curve. Here's what you need to know. There is an inverse relationship between the net mass energy of a nucleon within a nucleus and the strength of the bond that those nucleons within that atom have with each other. Let's break that down step by step. So every atom has nucleons. Nucleon is just the term for the components of the nucleus, so the protons and the neutrons. And each of those protons or neutrons has a mass energy. However, when we measure the average mass energy of the different nucleons in different atom types, we find that they're not the same. As we move from hydrogen to around iron, the average weight of each nucleon in those atoms weighs progressively less and the bond gets stronger. And above around iron, Nucleons, again, start to decrease in stability, decrease in the strength of their bond, and increase in the individual nucleon's weight. What this means is that the bond gets progressively stronger from hydrogen to iron, and the bond gets progressively weaker after, but what it also means that as you fuse atoms up to around iron, as you fuse those, those atoms are releasing energy. Because to take an example, the net weight of the 12 nucleons that make up three helium atoms is more than the net weight of the 12 nucleons that make up a carbon atom. So when three helium nuclei fuse to make carbon, energy is released. That's the radiation that's produced by fusion and that's what keeps a star alive. But once you reach the top of that curve, it becomes very hard to force nucleons together because at that point, if you were to force, for example, an iron nucleus with an iron nucleus, that new atom would have to weigh more than the sum of these two iron atoms. You need extra energy in that reaction to make that happen. And so that's why it maxes out around iron. However, you'll notice that iron's not really the top of the curve. And either way, we could go a little beyond iron. How is that? So first, take a look at the top of this curve. It's not iron at the top there. It's actually nickel. Nickel-62, though, not the unstable nickel-56 produced in the alpha process. Iron-56 marks the next most stable, the second most stable atom, but even nickel doesn't mark the end of the capacity for fusion. As we saw, we were able to get to zinc, and the reason for that comes from taking a closer look at this binding energy curve. While it's true that the average nucleon weight in zinc is higher than the average nucleon weight in nickel, it's not true that the average nucleon weight in a nickel atom plus a helium atom is greater than the, the weight of the nucleons in a zinc atom. And that's how we get it. Because helium packs so much of an extra punch, its nucleons weigh much more per nucleon than zinc's nucleons are bigger than nickel's. That's why you can add a helium nucleus to a nickel atom and you have the energy to create that zinc atom and still release some in nuclear fusion. That's how we get just a couple of heavier elements than iron in nuclear fusion in stars.